Hey there guys, Zach here from Invader, and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a first look at an early build of the Windows 10 Consumer Preview, or the Windows 10 January Technical Preview, uh, we don't know what it's going to be called yet. Uh, this is build 9901 and includes a number of features and enhancements over the previous build. Uh, this build did leak so it won't be pushed publicly to uh, Windows Insider, so if you do want to install this build, which I don't recommend, you're going to have to do some work to get it installed. Um, 9901 is rather special because it does include the beginnings of consumer preview features, which we haven't actually seen yet. So um, let's just dive straight in, shall we? The first noticeable change is the improved taskbar. Now, this isn't the final taskbar, there's still improvements to be made, however the user interface has started to get updated. As you can see down here, the actual taskbar is now transparent and is a lot darker than usual. It does change colour depending on your theme, so that's not what I wanted. If we open up the settings, depersonalise, and change the colour, it will change slightly, but not dramatically. Um, now, the next change, on the taskbar at least, is when you hover over icons, you get a sort of much more modernised hover than you did in previous builds, which is fairly nice. And Cortana, yes, Cortana works in this build, it has her search box open by default. That is default, I didn't change it to be like that, which is very interesting to say the least. You can change it back if you don't want, if you want it to be a search icon, you can do so. Or if you'd rather not have it there at all, you can also do that. So yes, I did mention Cortana works in this build. She works sort of, she's a bit iffy in this build. Uh, if we click on this microphone, rather obviously she'll start listening, but I can't seem to get her to do anything. So if I try to ask her what the weather's like, she won't listen. What's the weather like in New York City? She will look for it forever and ever and ever and uh, not know what, what you're asking. I'm sorry, I can't do this with you right now. I'll check back again after future updates. Um, I have no. She does speak. I can get her to do a few things, but she it's iffy. It's it's strange. I don't know why it works and doesn't work sometimes. But yeah, as you can see, all of your Windows Phone settings are synced to um, this build. Meaning, so I have on my phone, on my Windows Phone the science and tech news uh, for the news area, my weather settings, and so on. And you can see all these settings in the notebook, which is fairly nice. It looks just like Windows Phone. Uh, you can see places, which I should probably blur out, and also settings, which is your settings for Cortana. You can change your name, although in this build it's not yet implemented, as you can see here. Uh, Cortana can call you by your name, detect tracking stuff, and she can also respond when you say, hey, Cortana. Now, this isn't actually working yet, or at least I can't get it to work. If I turn it on, it just seems to turn off straight away. Okay, the next noticeable change in this build is the inclusion of a bunch of modern UI beta apps, or beta apps. Uh, let's see if we can find them here. So at first up we've got the camera beta, which is a interesting app because I don't have a camera so I can't actually demo it to you. So let's pretend we didn't do that. We've got... What else do we have? We've got a new calculator app, which is very sleek and very modern. Still got the uh, charms bar drop down menu. We have, what else do we have? We have contact support. This is a new app built within the modern UI environment, which apparently allows you to contact support. I don't believe it works, however. It might work. Oh my god, it does work. So let's help with my device. So you can schedule a call, call me as soon as possible, ask the community, chat online with the answer tech. Okay, so this is interesting. So you can now hook up to the Microsoft support directly within a modern UI app, which is very nice. So let's actually see what this does. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to work. This is legitimately interesting. Let's see, most chats start in 30 seconds or less. I bet it don't start. Any money, it doesn't start. Place your bets, any money, it doesn't start. Five seconds, six seconds, five seconds. Hmm, I'm gonna guess it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. So once once this does work, you'll be able to contact Microsoft uh, support directly from within Windows, which is fairly nice. We've got more apps here. We've got a brand new Getting Started app, which is much like the Windows 7 and Vista alternatives. It just teaches you how to use Windows. So let's say what's on the menu. Coming soon. So we don't know what's on the menu. Love it. Pin it. Also coming soon. Groups, which is interesting. Hmm, groups. Perhaps that's live folders. Resize and start. Search on start. Start settings. Interesting. So this might actually unveil a bunch of different things that they're changing within... 
uh, Windows 10. You can turn Cortana on and off and so on. Personalization. Uh, there's a phone button. There's a phone icon there. I wonder if Windows 10 can make phone calls. That'd be interesting. Action Center. Input updates and feedback. See set when you get new builds and so on. So this is definitely interesting. We also have a new Photos app, which is very nice. And the, these new sidebars within the One UI are apparent quite a lot between everywhere. So this is actually going to load my uh, my OneDrive. That's interesting. Um, so here's a bunch of albums. You can press this to go in and out, although it doesn't seem to work. And of course, you can get settings. Now, settings appear to be embedded into the modern UI apps this time, instead of being in the charms bar, uh, which is another change, actually. The settings um, charm is gone from the charms bar, and that's because the settings are now embedded in the modern UI apps, which is something uh, consumers preferred, as they couldn't actually find the settings. They wondered where they were because the charms were hidden, and it was a big palaver. But yes, they have changed that and now it's um, embedded into the apps. Up next, the settings app has been given somewhat of a facelift, in certain areas at least. If we go to system, we click it and it just goes back to the old user interface. But as you can see, Cortana is available, windowing, enable aero snap, optional features. We can add some optional features, although I don't believe this works. Nope. Uh, well, it does. It, you can add um, text and languages and so on. Furthermore, we've got an updated store app. Now, this app is pretty bro broken UI-wise, so um, as per usual, this does not represent the final product. This entire video does not represent the final product. But as you can see, it's now sort of unified. You get every single store, including Xbox Music and Video, uh, available in the store app. So as you can see, I can actually buy music straight from here, movies straight from here, and apps, which is a lot better and much more convenient. What's that? That is downloads and installs. So it definitely looks like the modern UI user interface, or the modern user interface, is taking a, uh, a different turn. It's becoming a lot more open and a lot more advanced, which is a good thing, definitely, since modern, the WinRT side of things are, is out to uh, replace Win32. And if Microsoft opens up the modern UI a lot more, I think they're onto a winner here. Uh, there's an updated sound recorder. Why not? Just click it and it will record as per usual. And that's about it for this build, I believe. The Windows Feedback app is still here and you can rather obviously give feedback. Although it got updated apparently, I was just about to skip that. As you can see, it's been updated dramatically with a better user interface than it was before. Which is actually a good thing because the Windows Live Mail, interesting. Let's give feedback for Windows Live Mail, which doesn't actually exist anymore. And finally, the Xbox app has been given an update. As you can see here, it's got a brand new user interface. Now, I'm not sure where this is going. As you can see, you can see all of your friends. You can see a bunch of other things, such as your achievements, your messages, your settings, and so on. But it looks like, and this is just a guess, but it looks like you will soon be able to play Xbox One games on PC. Because you get ad advertisements up here for Xbox One games and there's a store link and if you click on the store link it opens up the games area for um, for Windows. for Windows. Now of course that could just be, oh yeah they're just going to put the Windows 8 uh, games which are connected to Xbox Live here. Which could happen but that would be fairly anticlimactic so I guess we're going to have to wait and see. So yes yeah, stay tuned at winbeta.org for more regarding Windows 10. Thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.